Hey, welcome to episode four of Dish Learns Digital, Di Digital Art in One Year. That's right, you heard me. This is your first time on my channel. Welcome. I'm a Twitch streamer and a YouTuber who decided she wanted to learn digital art. So I'm taking it one week at a time, one topic at a time, kind of, and bringing you along for the ride. This week, I wanted to start learning shading, and then I also started learning chibi. So if either of those topics interest you, keep watching. Hopefully, you can learn along with me. Also, I went a bit too hard this week, and my wrist freaking hurts. Let me get my notes. This is um, called How to Shade with Pencil for Beginners. This video went over uh, three key concepts for learning pencil shading, the first of which being pressure control. She explained how important it is to be able to control different levels of shading in your artwork. She also talked about shading smoothly and that you want to eliminate uh, visible lines as much as possible and have your shading be very smooth. She also talked about overhand grip and using that for shading instead of drawing with your wrist and most importantly i think she talked about how important it is to understand light if you don't know how light interacts with an object you can't shade it properly then she talked about the different types of shading on an item so there's the light side the shadow side there's the core shadow that's right below the light side and then there's also bounce light every object reflects light in some way so you can't just consider the one main light source you also have to consider what other objects it is, is it hitting around your main subject that's going to affect how you shade your piece. Then she walked us through shading practice, which moved very quickly, by the way. Let's have Bro, Miss Girl wants me to draw an apple in two seconds. Here's me uh, horribly drawing an apple. The lines are so sharp and uncurved, but whatever, that's not the point of this. So she mentioned that you can use your light source to determine exactly how long your shadow is going to be. It's pretty cool to see how so many of these art concepts that we're learning are essentially science. And that's not to reduce science, of course, but just to point out that like these are concepts that you can learn we study what happens in the real world and that helps us create believable and beautiful artwork like even as we were shading this apple i almost like didn't really believe that i was doing it right but then once we got to the end although it's not perfect and the lines aren't quite as curved as they need to be the shading still looks to some degree believable then we got a bit off topic and started watching some colleen videos if you have never seen colleen i strongly recommend her videos she's very cool very down to earth. So from here, I just started practicing. I picked three random items from around the house. The first one was this Animal Crossing peach this blue journal. And then I drew this uh, little cube with, with numbers on it. I did a pencil shading on one side and then I went for a color shading on the other side. I think one thing that I'm struggling with and, and learning to, to overcome is that I don't really trust the process. Like, it's almost like if the artwork doesn't look perfect or correct at any given point in the process, I almost don't believe that, like, it's gonna get there. It's all building blocks to the ending piece. I finish something and I look away from it and I look back, and I'm surprised at how much more believable it was than I thought. Occur that very day. Peach. Here's the journal. This one was a bit harder. Uh, it wasn't, I don't actually know why I picked this item. It didn't have very much texture to it, but I did my best. In this context, I and then here's the cube. I used actually um, an eraser. So I shaded the entire thing black. I tried to replicate as much of what it would be like to use an actual pencil. And then here's my digital colored version. I honestly like them both equally. And here's them all together, all done. Uh, the next day, I decided to be a try-hard sweat, and this is when I really started to hurt my hand. I wanted to learn chibi anatomy, I wanted to start practicing it. I figured, hey, I should at least enjoy what I'm drawing, right? So, technically, I can practice shading on anything, so let me make it chibi. So here's me, uh, drawing some chibi anatomy. It's so interesting, because obviously, like, the closest thing to chibi anatomy is, like, kids but even then obviously it's not like realistic the heads are humongous they're weirdly shaped and even so it was cool to see how my short study of realistic anatomy definitely helped me draw believable lines like like the thigh should be this width because that's typically what these muscles look like and though it was my first time practicing chibi anatomy it looked believable because of that foundation and of course i'm still practicing i wanted to draw chibi zhongli but i couldn't quite get the eyes right <laughs> oh no he looks traumatized i don't know how to drive this is him right after he got back from uh 
from the the Conrian War. He signed the contract. <laughs> he just sees some. <laughs> Ah, now to the main event. This is the sweatiest thing I drew this week. I wanted to draw this beautiful picture of my friend Don in chibi form. Now I was very daunted because it would be my first time drawing clothes since I tried to draw that skirt on Neko. I didn't expect much. I was more focused on just getting the shape right, whatever shading I was capable of doing. I really took my time with this one. Like, I took a long time. I sat like this for many hours. Oh my gosh, my butt fell asleep. I started with the baseline, so I basically drew her body lines and used that for her sketch. I did the hair next, and then I did the clothing. I pretty much just, I mimicked what I saw, but didn't follow it exactly. I, I modified it a little bit to make it look more cutesy. I have noticed that I tend to gravitate toward very muted colors. I don't think that's a bad thing. I would like to uh, at least exercise more saturated colors, but honestly, I think the desaturated colors is just part of my style. I feel like we captured the... I think we captured her movement in this photo quite well. I think it looks good. I think I'm, I think I'm being too picky. <laughs> I added more guiding line work on the dress and the skirt. I was shocked by how just believable it looked and it made color shading so much easier. And here's where I started shading. You can see that I was pretty timid at first. There's nothing too strong about the shading here, but it looked believable. It was consistent with my light source. Uh, the hair was tough because her hair has a lot of different colors in it at least in this picture it did i also really struggle with the eyes because i just i don't really know how to draw like cutesy eyes yet but eventually i found something that i liked enough to keep <laughs> well it is all a work in progress and i am just figuring it out as I go understand and figure out like what is my style like what's my baseline for how to how I draw like lips and stuff overall I'm very pleased with this uh it took me three hours maybe uh like three and a half hours but whatever okay I'm learning I learned a lot during this process it's fine you can actually see the sunlight fading in my room <laughs> all right I think I'm calling it finished Putting my pen down. There's a little gray blob on her. Where? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh, my favorite game. Which layer is it? Get off of my, get off of my painting. Get off of my picture. This is probably like the most polished thing that I've done thus far. This didn't take three hours. I don't know what you're talking about. I gotta post it so I can get that immediate gratification. You know what I'm saying? You're not are you finished with your art if you didn't finish, if you didn't post it on Twitter. I drew a couple things on uh, the next couple days. I got to watch a very sweet VTuber named Saki finish Omori. I wanted to draw her VTuber model in kind of like a hybrid Omori style. You can see that I did mostly line shading because that's the style that Omori, um, the game uses, but I did definitely do some uh, blended shading as well. Hi, my hand is very sore. <laughs> my wrist is like, I don't know, I've been going hard drawing every single day for like, long hours and my wrist hurt real bad so like a like a nerve pain running from like my index finger to like all the way up my forearm <sighs> it's saturday i want to do i still want to do my self-portrait i'm just gonna have to like keep it low-key i'll probably do like um maybe i'll just do a sketch and i'll do like black and white shading instead of color shading i ordered a compression glove a pencil grip and a stand for my ipad so hopefully I can help um, 
I always do this. I always go too hard when I'm learning something and then I end up hurting myself. I gave myself plantar fasciitis when I was learning yoga because I stretched my feet like too hard. I'll do the portrait. I just have to keep it low key. I won't finish it at least. I'll probably just do the sketch and I'll do the shading. Maybe I'll finish it another day. Uh, I did not take it easy. I really couldn't stop myself. This one, I really had to trust the process on, uh, but I followed basically the same format that I did for my, that I did for Dawn's drawing, but I was just a bit less picky about it. Uh, I didn't want to sit there for three hours, so. The hair shading was what I really focused on the most and I messed around with the hue tint quite a bit before I settled on something that I was like even remotely happy with. It's a little messy, but she's cute. I don't hate it. I don't really love it either. I feel like I've I feel like I'm like close to grasping like it looks better from here maybe it's just like i'm having a hard time believing that like the techniques are gonna work like i still feel like the shading is kind of like not believable how it's like it's all light right that's really what it comes down to is like how does light interact with objects i try to push myself a little bit and only use cell shading and not use any gradient shading whatever the frick it's called so all things considered, I think it's, um, oh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the thing again. It's progress. <laughs> it's progress. I really should have rested, but I didn't. And I wanted to practice my cell shading. So I drew this like glossy coffee table with my little matcha on top. And then I drew Kirby. No surprise there, I love drawing Kirby, so easy. And here are all the things together that I drew this week. I can see the areas that I've pushed myself. Um, stronger colors, more consistent colors. I feel a strong color palette with a lot of these. Almost all of them are like slightly different styles, which I think is good. I am figuring it out, so I'm trying lots and lots of things. Shading, I feel, is something that's going to take me a long time to really master. And I need to give my hand a break, so I might need to take it a bit easier next week. Maybe no uh, hard set theme, but I will just draw what I want to draw. We'll see if I can uh, control myself at all. Thank you so much for watching. You can find all the resources and everything I drew in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see the next episode. And you can click on this playlist to watch all of the videos in this art series. All right, I will see you guys next week and good luck on whatever you're working on.